in 2021, in the middle of the at the height of the of the COVID scare, and right as the vaccines were being rolled out, Stanford University, the same web responsible if you have, our folks are familiar with the Stanford Internet Observatory and its role in both election censorship in 2020 and uh, COVID censorship, they were formal partner, the formerly partner disinformation flagger for DHS. Their head of technical research started her career in the CIA. It's, it's run by the, the former head of the State Department for Russia Affairs uh, under the Obama administration. It's at the epicenter of our foreign policy establishment and the whole Russiagate apparatus. But they held a, uh, a, an internal conference in, at the height of COVID in 2021 where the explicit purpose of the conference was to, was to figure out what laws needed to be passed and how they could enact, what steps they could take in order to get their allies in government to pass laws to mandate the implementation of NewsGuard on social media, okay? And it, so the entire conference was about how, the, it was, was this, they said our private sector censorship mercenary firms like NewsGuard, like Graphica, like the Global Disinformation Index. These are for-profit private sector censorship mercenaries who sell censorship technology and sell censorship machine-readable scripts to the, to the platforms could, could be sustainable because they were running up debt. They were not profitable because there's no organic product market fit. Company, the social media platforms don't want to buy censorship software. If they want to censor something, they'd censor it themselves. So there was not an organic market for it. So these for-profit companies were not profitable. And so a cabal within the nonprofit, government-funded Stanford University, which I should mind you was the West Coast Center of MKUltra for the CIA, but that's a whole separate thing. Well, I mean, the lineage goes very deep. I mean, this is part of because the military complex was based out of, out of California during the Silicon Valley era, but okay, getting back to this. So that, was, that conference was funded by your tax dollars. The National Science Foundation gave that exact group $3 million in government grants in 2021, actually, right, right before that meeting. And there, they came to the meeting with an agenda, which is in order for us to have a sustainable, automatic, self-functioning, inexpensive you know, thing where we can be relatively hands-off, we don't need to do all these crazy operations like we've been doing with this, It'd be great if we just had a bunch of private sector groups who are doing this, who are on our side, and they could do this for profit. And so you don't need, you know, you're not going to need as much government funding, uh, you know, uh, for, for all this. You're going to be able to have a self-sustaining censorship apparatus that will be evergreen, and we won't even have to think about dissident political thought ever again. They said the problem is it's not profitable. So how can we get our partners in, pro in the government to compel the purchase of the censorship software so that, they, so that the industry of censorship technology is profitable on itself. So again, they are, this is a nonprofit group funded by the government, staffed by the government, plotting to work with the government in order to change the, the economic business model of the social media companies and the economic business model to the negative if they don't buy the software and change the business model of their own puppets within the censorship industry who act as the mercenaries who do the dirty work so that they would be profitable so that it was a business decision for the tech companies to simply shut up and, and buy, this, buy the machine readable script for who to censor on the internet. This is like the greatest episode of London Real right <laughs> yes, now. Yes, right there. 